In the recent weeks, we've been talking a lot about Windows and some of the things that it's been doing to push people over to Linux. Indeed, we talked a little bit about Windows pushing out a paid subscription model if you'd like to keep your Windows 10, forcing people to Windows 11, generating a lot of e-waste as some people just can't upgrade their computer, and it's otherwise perfectly fine. We talked a little bit about uh, some of the other steps that, that you might use to switch to Linux and stuff like that. But now Windows is doing even more crazy stuff. We do want to talk, however, a little bit about what Linux won't do that Windows will. And these tie into some of the latest things that are coming up. So with that, let's go ahead and see what Linux won't do. Thanks for checking out this video. If not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that. Hit that thumbs up button or hey, maybe that thumbs down button if you hate my ugly face. But with that being said, we are going to talk a little bit today about what uh, Linux won't do. Why are we doing this? Well, if we went back and had a look at a few of the recent videos we did, we talked about the Windows subscription model and the fact that they're giving full screen overlays again, trying to get people to switch to Windows 11, but some people won't, and this is potentially going to generate some e-waste. But then, of course, we got a uh, the first step to switch. Go, okay, this is kind of crazy. And I don't ever recommend somebody just jump cold turkey. You're going to delete your Windows. You're going to jump right on over there to Linux, and everything's going to be fine because there's a little bit of a learning curve. So in our video on first steps to ditching Windows, we talked about those initial steps. You can go ahead and have a look at that video on our channel as well. Of course, the initial steps basically consist of looking at the various software that you need to use and stop thinking about what software or do I have to run, but what task am I trying to accomplish? And then look at the alternative softwares and get yourself geared up for that change. Then, of course, we actually changed the computer that I picked up for somebody to switch to Linux, and we did the full transition. We took Windows off of the system. We installed Linux Mint Debian Edition onto the system. We made that switch complete, and from there, we talked a little bit about some of the comments we had in these videos, people saying, well, I can't switch because this, that, or the other. So we talked about a lot of things that Windows uh, users are saying Linux can't do. And we said, no, actually, Linux can actually do all that kind of stuff. So you can go ahead and have a look at the, that video as well, which is uh, new on our channel also. But today, what we're going to look at is the next things that Windows is pushing out that Linux just won't do. So first and foremost, uh, if you have not updated your or activated your Windows system yet, then it's going to start limiting out some of your functionality. Now, this here is one that uh, I can uh, I can be partially on Microsoft's side. Let me explain. First and foremost, prior to Windows 10, an unactivated copy of Windows, I don't believe you could do anything on. It was maybe it was eight you start to be able to do some things without activating it. I can't remember. You just got a watermark at the bottom of your screen. And in some instances, some of the settings were locked. Windows 10 particularly likes to collect full usage analytics, uh, full uh, data collection on the people using Windows, all sorts of stuff. And in, in order to toggle those switches off to minimize the data you're sending to Microsoft, and to be clear, you are always going to be sending data to Microsoft, you had to activate Windows to do that. I'm okay with that because it is their product on the operating system. What I'm not okay with is where we're going to end on this video, and that is that after paying money to activate the software and then activating it, they're still going to push ads on you, and that is also problematic. Now, we're going to get to that later because we do want to talk a little bit about the activation. So in this article, what they're talking about is in the, um, in the upcoming build previews, what is happening is Edge is not going to allow you to do any of the personalizations. You know, turn off the data collections and a bunch of other features. You're going to be locked out of doing some of those things if you are using Windows in a non-activated state further locking down the system. Now, I'm okay with that in some elements um, because it is their operating system. Again, I'm not okay with them continuing to push ads on you after you have paid them for the system. Remember that whole model? Hey, if uh, you don't want to pay for it, then you can go ahead and watch the ads. Okay, now you're paying for it and you have the ads. You can turn some of them off to some degree, but not universally and not 100%. Now, will Linux do this? For the most part, no. There are a few exceptions out there. Of course, we covered the video called Ubuntu, 
And uh, Wubuntu was based on another distro, and I'm forgetting the name of that one off the top of my head. This one, again, it was uh, basically a Windows clone. You can see that thumbnail there. It looks like Windows 11. It is not. This is running Linux. This is, I believe, a plasma shell themed up to look just like Windows. And you can use this full system, except there are elements of it that are locked behind an activation key. You can pick that up for like 30 bucks and you can activate it and use everything. But this is one out of thousands and thousands of distributions. There are a few other distributions that have models somewhat similar to this. Elementary OS, there's no activation key, but the original download is uh, basically a purchase, 10, 20, 30 dollars. What do you think it's worth? Of course, you can't always come over here enter zero but I always tell you if you're using this distribution and you get a lot of benefit out of elementary it takes a lot to run a distribution so please support them if not on this download page please support them I believe they have a patreon page and some other functions elementary OS is not my cup of tea but if it is your cup of tea I highly support uh, encourage you to support the developer. Uh, but this is one where you can go in and you can pay any amount of money that you would like to download it. Zorin OS is another very popular Linux distribution. This one I do really like. It's not one I've run full time. Uh, and there's a few criticisms I have of it, of course, like everything. However, this is a really good first uh, Linux distribution if you're looking for one. In their model, what they have is they have some completely free and then they have the Pro. The Pro is $48. The Really the difference between the free ones, which is your core or your education, those ones there actually are have, this will actually show you what we have in there. Uh, so educational games and apps. And these are the things that the Pro has that the free versions don't. You have extra desktop layouts. This is one for me, it's more gimmicky for me because it's like, uh, how often do you change your layout? If you like that particular layout, you can go ahead and use it. That might be worth it for you, it might not. Uh, a professional grade suite of apps. All of the apps they include are all still freely available. This just makes them easy to package without having to go ahead and um, uh, download them all individually. They have advanced productivity tools. I don't know much about those. Additional artwork, so theming up your system better, that might be worth it for you. And the biggest benefit to paying for it is it does support the development of Zorin, just like elementary OS. If you're gonna run it, I definitely encourage you to support the people developing it. And so that is uh, what they're doing. But none of these are going to prevent you from running it or lock down your system. So that's something Linux won't do is it's not going to lock down your system if you're failing to pay the activation key. Now, you may not be able to download the extra features like you get in Pro or, you know, you may not be able to use uh, the Ubuntu has, I think it's like the some of the Windows compatibility, and they have put some things into making things like OneDrive work uh, much better than other distributions have. So that might be worth the uh, paying the fee for. So that certainly is, is it. But Linux is not going to hassle you if you don't activate it because there is no Linux that requires activation in your software. So that's good to know. So what is the next thing that it's doing? Well, it's official. Ads are coming to the Windows Start menu. Now, this isn't like Google Play ads. You're not going to see an ad down there for the latest face cream or something like that. What you are going to see is ads for applications in the Start menu. And what I find really fascinating about this particular uh, illustration they showed us is there's an application I didn't expect they would actually promote. Mm, they're not handpicking them. They're basically pulling the application from the top recommended things that people download a lot. So, of course, you've paid for your activation, you've activated your computer, and now the computer is going to continue to throw ads at you. To be fair, you can turn these off, but why should I go through a nightmare of settings inside of Windows' increasingly convoluted settings panel in order to turn off advertisements when I don't want the thing to do anything. Like, constant pop-up notifications. Have you tried OneDrive? Meanwhile, it threw a boom ding over my video that I am trying to record, and now there is a Windows notification sound in my video because it decided at that second to push me an a, uh, advertisement for OneDrive because it sees I have not plugged it in yet. Of course, if you have plugged it in, it might be a bling, get more space. $9.99, yeah, you know, whatever it is. So what these guys are saying here, this is the developer preview, saw that uh, 
in the recommended settings, so on the start menu, there is a recommended settings, which traditionally has had recently installed applications or applications you use frequently. Now they're going to start putting recommended. Curiously, let's think about this one for a moment. Windows is doing everything it can to keep you on edge. If you tried, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but in the past, if you tried to download Chrome, it would be like, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, you have Edge. It's amazing. You, I mean, Edge, come on, guys. So they're recommending Opera Browser. There is some discussion. Is the Opera Browser owned by a Chinese company? Yes and no. Uh, it was founded, of course, by a uh, Norwegian company. They were uh, purchased by a Chinese group. They changed the name over to uh, uh, Otello, uh, which is uh, like Opera Software ASA. Uh, effectively, though, the long and the short of it is, yes, Opera is a Chinese company. Is this good or bad? I will leave that to you to decide. Do you want your browser run by a Chinese company or not? I don't know. I just find it hilarious that Windows, which does everything it can do to keep you on edge, is now promoting a browser. Now, again, it's not handpicking this. It's just picking this because it was the thing that showed up in the list of the recommended apps, whatever else. But also understand that if you download an app and it's one of those ones that requires a payment, Microsoft gets money from that. So they're basically trying to promote things in there. This isn't some weird thing. Microsoft actually responded uh, to this and they confirmed that, yes, um, the uh, uh, let's see where it was at. So we are trying out recommendations to help you discover great apps from the Microsoft Store under Recommended on the Start menu, Microsoft wrote. This will appear only for Windows insiders in the beta channel in the U.S. and will not apply to commercial devices managed by organizations. So it sounds like it, like it sounds like in the current state, yes, it's just in the beta channel, but the beta channel is for testing things. So is this coming to the main production of your Windows Home Edition? Probably. Uh, but we don't know for sure. Of course, they say, can it be turned off? Yes. And settings personalization, start and turning the toggle for show recommendations for tips, apps, promotions, and more. So you can turn it off, but Windows is now pushing these up. Well, Linux ain't going to do that. Linux won't push you ads. It's not going to try and give you a notification about trying out some new application. It's not going to get in your way. And that's one of the things I commented on the video where we were talking about when I first set up Windows and showed why. I use Linux instead. The operating system you want in your computer disappears into the background. It is a tool that allows you to get productive. The problem I'm seeing with Windows is it becomes so in your face that it's not like it doesn't disappear in the background. It's constantly at your face. It's constantly pushing things. It's constantly like, try this, do this. Like I am in the middle of production. I do not have ADHD. Stop giving me a bunch of things and let me do my work. Linux does that. Linux is not going to interrupt. It's not going to pop up random notifications. It's not going to be like, hey, try this application. It's not going to cram it into your start menus. Linux itself gives you freedom over your computer. So these are some of the latest things Windows is doing. There's just utter nonsense. So I do have a playlist. This is going to go in that playlist as well on steps to get started with Linux. So if you've not already gotten started with Linux, you can test out the waters without changing your computer. If you only have one computer and you don't want to mess it up and you can't pick up another one from a thrift shop or something, there are ways to play around with Linux without changing your current operating system. And we have some tools about that, installing into USB drives, just running simple live keys, virtualization. There's a lot of ways that you can try it out. There's even some instances where you can run them in browsers just to give them a try. So these are some tips and some tricks. Uh, Again, follow the playlist of the video to see a little bit more about how to switch to Linux. That's what this channel is about, the, the why and the how to switch to Linux. With that, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Hit that notification bell if you are inclined. I am not personally inclined. I have no offense if you don't hit that notification bell. 
uh, leave a comment if you uh, if you'd like to. That'll help move the video along in the algorithm. Also, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a lot of support methodologies. You can have a look over at the website switchlinks.com. Have a look at that support tab, and that'll show you the the patreons, the the subscribe stars, the locals that we have, and also the affiliate. Uh, companies that we have worked with as well. With that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.